So uh, I want to talk a little bit about how we do research at NVIDIA and um, what we have is um, um, Falcor is our real-time rendering R&D infrastructure. Um, we started it three years ago. It was focused on rasterization. We just wanted a common tool for all the researchers to use. It evolved over the year. Um, it literally changed the way that NVIDIA invents new rendering ideas. It's increased our idea throughput, uh, improved our collaboration, and basically allows us to work on harder problems, solve harder problems that the industry is facing. Um, so why do we need it? Um, I'm sure many people here have their own private framework and are aware of you know, stuff like the XUT that we have in the past that people were using. Um, and when I joined NVIDIA, every researcher did use um, his own or hers private personal <coughs> framework. Um, in fact, how many people here are using their own framework to prototype stuff? Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. So um, for the most part, those frameworks are pretty simple, right? They provide basic GUI, probably a model loading uh, um, and texture loading uh, uh, support. Um, and as a consequence, the image quality is, is pretty basic. Use basic assets like Sponza, everybody knows Sponza. Um, basic shading, mostly direct illumination. Uh, maybe we implemented basic shadow maps. Um, and for us, that proved to be problematic. So in video research, our research ideas end up in engines and end up in products. Um, and what we found out is that you do research on Sponza and something that looks look like that, uh, but games don't render that image quality. Render games looks like this, and this is the Infiltrator demo. This is from 2014, I think. So games look amazing. Um, and when we used to work, you know, you have this brand new fancy anti-aliasing technique, um, and you get it to work on Sponza, then you try and integrate it into an engine, but the engine has particle system, and it has indirect illumination, and the specular highlights are high frequency, and your fancy idea breaks, and then you have to start tweaking it inside the engine, um, and we found out that we just wasted a lot of time, like, you know, going back and forth. Um, I was actually, you know, after I joined NVIDIA, we started talking with game devs, I was surprised that it's not an NVIDIA research only problem. I, I, I had, I've had some discussion with game developers and they're facing the same issue. Um, thing is, game engines constantly push the boundaries of visual quality, yet our private rendering frameworks don't really involve. They stay in the same place using the same lighting model that we've been using 20 years ago. Um, there's a huge gap there in, in terms of visual quality, and this is one of the things that Falcor uh, tries to fill. So what were the requirements when we started to think about Falcor? Um, the requirements that uh, we had in mind was we want to reach 70% of AAA engine image quality. And we feel like 70% is a good number. Reaching 100% is going to be very hard because game engines are complicated. Uh, and they use a lot of techniques to get, you know, the visual quality, and I don't think it's vis feasible to do that in a framework that's supposed to be simple to use. Uh, and we do want to keep the simplicity of the framework. We don't want to work, we don't want to build our own engine and work in there. We want something that is simple and intuitive, and I'm going to show a code example in a second. Uh, and we also want, always want to support the latest technologies and APIs. If someone want to ask me, why don't you work in UE4? Uh, it's open source, uh, but we don't want to wait for people, other people to go and add DirectX ray trace and stuff like that. We want to be able to always be on the cutting edge of technology. Um, and how does that translate to Falcor? So we are actually have 70% of uh, AAA uh, engine image quality. We implemented physically based, uh, uh, a modern physically based shading system. We have a large modular rendering techniques library. Uh, we have an API abstraction layer uh, with very clear and simple interfaces. It's only 50,000 lines of code if you compare it to Game Engine that has like millions of lines of code. Um, and in terms of support, like I said, we're always on the cutting edge. Uh, we're going to release DirectX ray tracing, su ray tracing support inside Falcor in early April. Uh, and DXML is coming in early May. And we're always uh, integrating the latest technologies into Falcor. Um, so what does that allow us to do? Basically, we can start uh, working on a basic asset. You can see no shadows, no nothing, just like very basic lighting, uh, like we used to do in the past. Uh, but once we have some confidence in our technique, uh, we can just load a more complicated asset, something like shader balls and add shadow maps techniques that are part of Falcor. Um, and 
once we feel like we're ready for prime time, maybe we take it into the Sun Temple and um, this thing use, uses light probes and like uh, diffuse GI. Um, and so we can take our basic technique, you know, and scale it up, scale it up until we feel ready to actually take it and integrate it into an engine. We don't have to work with Sponza all the time. Um, so that's kind of like how Falco was until uh, a few months ago, um, and then Microsoft started talking to us about diuretic ray tracing, and we felt that this is the future and we really need it inside Falco. Um, so as soon as we got the binaries, I just sat and like um, added direct X-ray tracing obstruction into Falcor. And again, it allows us to start, you know, uh, with basic assets, right, basic path tracers, and then start scaling uh, our techniques up to more complicated stuff like the Amazon Bistro. Um, and we also have scanning support. I wish I had a video for that, but this Mac is actually running around. Um, and, you know, we can do retrace reflections and filtering. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, how Falcor can help you do direct DXR prototyping um, and research. So we have an abstraction layer, and why do we need an abstraction layer? And I've been talking to people, and some people, you know, have been asking me, we don't need abstraction layers. We like to work with raw API. Um, I want to start with a story. Um, so a couple of months ago, we started, you know, working with um, some of our game developer partners. Um, and we gave them Falcor with DXR support. Um, we gave them that because we wanted to give them like a reference implementation of how to use it with some tutorials. We didn't expect them to actually use it, but what happened is, is like 24 hours later, they sent us a video. Um, they took our basic uh, ray tracer, they added ray trace volumetric, volumetric fog uh, rendering. Um, I mean, it took them like two, three weeks to integrate it into their own framework, into their own, engine, um, in, into their own engine at the end, but in like the first few weeks, they sent out a, a bunch of videos because Falcor allows them to actually go and play with DXR uh, without having to wait for that integration into their engine. Um, I know a lot of you don't have the resources to actually go. Like if you're a big game developer, then yes, but if you're just like to walk, go and... Um, um, uh, mess around with the XR or something like that. You don't want to go and implement the entire API. Uh, so that's why we have an abstraction layer. Uh, a new API takes time to learn. We're going to save you that time by giving you, and I'm going to show that in, on the next slide, a code example. Um, we want you also to focus on your algorithm, not the API. So direct X ray tracing, I want to say that it's complicated to use, but there are like, um, it's a big addition to. Uh, to DX, and it's kind of like abstract the API once, let's focus on the algorithms and the problems we want to solve and not how to use the API. Uh, it um, allows for a fast turnaround time. We can use, we can test uh, many more ideas in the same time on different assets. Um, and lastly, the abstraction layers contains many non-obvious optimizations. For those of you who were in Ignacio's talk an hour ago, he mentioned some things that we need to do with the acceleration structures and how to, uh, update the, uh, uh, the shader tables. Falcor is gonna take all care, care of that for you. Uh, and again, we have some examples. Once when we worked on, on the XR and the research team, like we had five different application, at some point we realized something was running slow. Instead of going and optimizing five different applications, we just optimized Falcor once and people updated Falcor, the library, and they got an optimization and it sped up their, uh, their sample. 